You're listening to The Startup with Monique LeRae, only on L.A. Talk Radio. How's it going, Los Angeles? This is The Startup with Monique LeRae. I'm Monique LeRae. Welcome to my show. We have a jam-packed, amazing show for, for you today. Um, I want to first say thank you to our sponsors, Michael Solberg Family Wines, La Casa del Camino, and, of course, uh, Shane Hyman at Global uh, Solutions. Thank you so much for your support. And first up, I would like to introduce Mike. Mike, come on in. <laughs> hey, Monique, how are you? Hey, good. How are you, Mike? I'm awesome. Thanks. Great. Go ahead and introduce yourself to the uh, listeners and viewers and tell us what, you, what you're up to these days. Well, my name is Mike Caldwell. I'm the marketing medic and I help uh, small and medium-sized businesses with their marketing mes message to win more clients and make more sales. So, Mike, tell us a little bit about your background, how you started in this, and um, where you are right now with your clients and what you're looking for for the future. So, my book is called Empathic Marketing. It's an international bestseller. But the empathy actually started about 20 years ago when I worked as a firefighter paramedic. And one of the things that separated me from a lot of the other paramedics was the empathy I showed for my patients. So many medics, they, they focus more on like the physical ailment as opposed to the emotional side. Mm. And quite often the patients are just scared. And if you don't understand that, then the, the call doesn't go the way it, it should. Yeah. And then, uh, so I was a firefighter paramedic for 12 years. I fell off a cliff, I broke my arm and I broke my leg and I broke my back. Oh. And it was at that time, I, I'm like, you know what? I don't think I wanna be a paramedic anymore. I wanna be an entrepreneur. And that got me on the road to this whole, whole marketing game. Wow. 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 It's funny how things along your path, you know, I could say pebbles along the road, you start collecting them and you've got this beautiful basket of just experiences and it brings you here. Um, so LA Fire and Rescue is a new show on Peacock. And one of my best friends is uh, the fire captain on there, Sheila Kelleher. And so I hear all kinds of stories. Can you share something that was a moment where you said, here's a pivotal moment in my career? in my firefighting paramedic career. And now I want to go in a different direction. Um, well, the, the reason I went in a different direction is because I was uh, I was the supervisor for an air ambulance, a helicopter base. Okay. And so as much as I love being a paramedic and, you know, flying into the scene and saving somebody's life and flying away, you know, like a superhero, um, <laughs> the, it was the stress of the politics that got to me. Right. And I, I just didn't like all the management stuff that I had to do, all the back and forth. And also... I'm a morning person. I'm a day person. I'm not a night person. So anytime after like 11 PM, my body just physically aches. And yeah. so, you know, as I entered my thirties, I was like, you know what, I, I need to look at something else. And I just like the excitement of, of, you know, being my own boss and being an entrepreneur. Wonderful. And I think you do. It's true. You got to listen to your body and it leads you where you need to go. I mean, I'm 45 now. I'm totally listening to my, I'm, you get new things. You're like, what's going on? But I'm excited for your book. So can you tell us um, what the viewer, what the reader can expect without giving it away? What th can they expect when they crack open your, your forward and your book? Well, it's not a typical marketing book in that it's very story based. And so a lot of it does go back to, to my paramedic days. Like one of my favorite paramedic stories was, um, you know, there was two calls that were exactly the same calls in the middle of the night. It was both chest pain related. And the first gentleman was like, oh, my pain's like 10 out of 10, you know, for chest pain. And when you hear that, you're like, oh, 10 out of 10, this is serious. Right. But I was attending, my partner was driving. I told my partner to, we're going to transport this patient code three out of four, which mm. meant, you know, urgent, but not emergent. Okay. Mm. And he's like, okay. And so that's what we did. We went to the hospital, but that was that. And then a couple hours later, another call came in. It was a woman. And she's, we asked, what's your pain out of 10? She's like, um, it's like a three or a four out of 10. And I told my partner, we're going to transport her code four, like lights and sirens, you know, the whole, the whole kabang. Mm. Right. And, uh, and that's, what we did because the reason was is they were saying one thing but their eyes were telling me something else and so the first patient he was you know kind of making sure his mail was in place and the other the other woman you could just tell she had that like sort of fear of death in her eyes yeah and sure enough when we did our uh, when we did our paperwork and we we're coming back through the emergency department like all hands were on deck for that woman and meanwhile the guy was like drink, drinking an orange juice sitting up in his bed <laughs> 
Well, yeah, you know, and I think that you're really tapping into something there, and I'm sure you're applying this to your marketing um, your marketing avenue now with your clients. It's like you, you hear what they're saying and you're, you're getting their needs. You're doing that, you know, discovery meeting with them, but then you're looking at what it is, right? You're looking into their eyes, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure you're applying like real tangible infield um, practices that you've learned from the paramedic life. Yeah. And so I'm sorry, we kind of got off track with the paramedic stuff, but yeah, exactly. With empathic marketing, there's two things that are the basis of it. And that's having an experiential understanding of their journey and also an emotional understanding. And with the emotional understanding, I look at what I call the four D's of transformation delivery. So in their short term, like what are, are their difficulties now and what desires do they have to you know, solve it like today or this week? But you also want to look at long term for what are their biggest dreads and dreams. And that's where all of your copy comes from. It's like diving into those four D's of transformation delivery. I can't wait. So you guys, if you're listening, Mike just launched a book. He gave you a little little uh, teaser. Where can people pick up the book, Mike? You know, it's beautiful outside. You can sit on the beach and probably crack that open and finish it soon. This summer. And it is, it's, it's a fun book to read. Uh, most people say they read it like in a weekend because they don't want to put it down. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a marketing book, so but it's not dry. Um, yeah. And for your readers, I will give it to them for free. They just have to pay for the shipping. Wow, you guys. This is a first time. The Startup with Monique Lurie exclusive here with Mike Caldwell. Mike, that is amazing. Thank you. So very generous. You guys, if you want one of Mike's books, I want you to jump into the chat, jump into the comments, and just say, I want one and we'll DM you, we'll get your information and we'll, you know, we'll cover that. We'll get that postage out. Mike, where can people follow you and support? And even if they did want to gift a book, maybe go ahead and get a Christmas stocking stuffer in July. Where can they find you? Well, my main website is themarketingmedic.ca because I'm in Canada. But for <laughs> the uh, for the book offer, it's, uh, it's I have a podcast of my own. It's, and it's on that site. It's um, because business is personal.com. Wonderful tie in. I'm loving the, you know, the empathetic piece. I'm loving the, the name of your brand. Well done on tying both of those in. And guys, if you, if you can trust anyone, you can trust a medic, right? I mean, <laughs> I hope so. And a Canadian at, on top. And a like Canadian. That. You guys are always so nice and smiley. And, <laughs> and my wife's name is Monique. So we, we, hey! I've got the whole package. I love that. Your wife <laughs> sounds lovely already. <laughs> All right, you guys, go ahead and say the name one more time and give us your tagline on the book. Yeah, it's uh, the to get the free book, you just pay for the shipping. It's becausebusinessispersonal.com. And empathic marketing is five ways to develop your new empathic superpower to win more clients and make more sales. Mike, thank you so much for being here today. We're going to have to have you back and uh, get an update on your book. But I'll definitely be getting my copy here real soon, right? We got to talk to your people. I'll have my people talk to your people. That sounds good. <laughs> have a beautiful rest of your weekend and, and have fun, doggies. All right. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> thanks, Mike. All right, guys, we're jumping right in. We have our next uh, next guest. Go ahead, Sam, and let's see who we've got next. All right, Andrew. How's it going, Andrew? Hey, Monique. How are you doing? It's great to be here. Oh, my gosh. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for making time on the weekend. Absolutely. Absolutely. So why don't you go ahead and properly introduce yourself to the listeners and the viewers and tell them who you are. Sure. My name is Andrew Meadows, and um, I represent an international investor. And I'm here to talk to your audience about a cautionary investment tale. I know you have uh, you, your audience is very interested in business and investing and uh, we're hoping that uh, what happened to my client does not happen to them. And uh, he uh, was marketed a product, an investment product by a bank known as Afrasia Bank. And they are located on an island in the Indian Ocean, Mauritius, which is well known for its boutique investment banks. Mm -hmm. um, this, this product was marketed as a low risk uh, way to uh, invest your capital. Uh, minimum returns of capital plus 8%, and it was capped at your capital plus uh, 28%. And, you know, after much discussion, my client decided to invest. And uh, five years later, when the funds matured, he had lost a significant amount of money. 
and now he cannot even get it, what's remaining of his capital back. So we're going public with this story. We want people to know that if they are considering investing with Afrasia or really any investment uh, firm, that they need to be careful and not fall for hollow marketing pitches. Wow. I'm really glad that you're on the show. I've never had anyone on the show as a bank critic. I think that we have to, you know, put things out there and be an avenue since we are, you know, LA Talk Radio and we are a dot com. So we can kind of go in different spaces and really shine some lights, shine some light in different areas. Tell me how you first discovered. I know that you said that it was supposed to mature in five. So let's say that the audience isn't quite sure how an investment like this is supposed to go. When do you find out before it's too late? When can you, if you can, save yourself? Well, um, you know, the, each investment has a maturity date. And uh, with the promises, this particular product was the uh, Capital Protected Eurobank Booster. Uh, my client, uh, as many of your audience probably are, is privy to certain investment opportunities. Um, so the maturity uh, date uh, was earlier this year in 2023, early 2023. And um, again, it lost a significant amount of money. That product was tied to the Eurostox Bank Index is a well-known European bank index. Um, and, you know, the, the loss of the, 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 the unrealized investment was one thing but the the second part of this is that my client cannot get his original capital back wow. and he was considering you know he's he, they did a profile on him actually and found that he was a very conservative investor and uh offered this capital protected product which is exactly what it is capital protected Mm -hmm. um and guaranteed in, in fact we have emails back and forth that you know you you weren't going to you aren't going to take part in any risk uh for this product so the the sort of the frustration with my client and why we're going public is he can't get his original money back and uh the bank executives have gone back and forth with him via email and uh, have promised that that original investment back that original capital which was about five million british pounds which is 6.5 million dollars so we're talking about a a significant amount of money here right. and uh this is frustrating so yeah we're considering legal remedies clearly we're we're going public with it which is one of our avenues um, we'd like the Financial Services Commission, which is the bank regulating uh, entity in Mauritius, to look into it. Um, the Bank of Mauritius, which is the central bank in that island nation, yeah. um, is uh, could look into it. We're, we're at a point where, um, you know, normally these things aren't aren't public, but but the frustration level is to a point where uh, we went, we decided to. Uh, uh, take it public. And quite frankly, uh, Monique, the story's got some legs. We're getting picked up. Um, I think that your production crew and yourself were, were uh, forward seeing enough to have us on the show. So it, it's picking up steam. And I think people are interested in this. I agree. I like to kind of uh, push against the machine, if you will. Freelance producer, it's in my blood. And I really like seeing people stand up for themselves. People work hard and people are fed up with things that aren't working for them. And outright, you know, theft and in and, and the system is just not going to work for people anymore. I think after coming out of the pandemic, we're really seeing a shift in humanity and we want things that are fair. And right. you're no different in the banking industry. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, whether it's somebody investing in, in, in an offshore bank, a boutique bank, or whether it's somebody's retirement account, I mean, this, this hits uh, large investors to small investors to medium investors. We're, we're asking for uh, clear, concise, and honest marketing materials and to live up to what you promise. You know, a lot of uh, large corporations, Hertz, Glencore, Macy's, Commerce Bank, they, they backed this investment. They were the underlyings, they were the guarantors. And we feel that our investors' money is being sacrificed in order to protect these companies that back this investment. So there's a lot going on and, and a lot will emerge, especially if some of these regulatory authorities look at it. But uh, again, 
uh, I think that uh, your audience being a business, uh, business focused audience would be interested in this. Can you identify maybe without saying any other names? Or, I'm sure that, that your, your client's not the only person that was um, was victimized here. Um, but have you been able to identify more um, victims? Yeah, we. I, I wouldn't want to name names, but no. which, you know, there, there are there there are pe you know people uh, tend to talk, and especially in in the the quick communication world that we live in, um, we are getting scattered reports of similar uh, instances uh, with the Frasia Bank. So, um, you know, we're not happy with them. Other people aren't happy with them. Um, they 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 tout on their website several awards that they have won. Um, and, and we're just asking them to live up to the, the integrity that they profess to have. And uh, again, two things going on here, the investment that wasn't realized and the returns that weren't realized, and then the capital money, what's remaining. My, my client lost 20% of his original capital. Wow. So 20%, but really what we're saying is it's 100% because he hasn't gotten any money back. Wow. So he lost all of his money at this point. So um, again, um, this this is going to uh, evolve with time, and uh, we just want a Frazier Bank to do the right thing here. This is a beautiful example, everybody, of uh, I'd say a classy business person doing something. Um, you know, this is a really good conflict resolution tool that you're using, you and your client. I, in my view, um, you're, before you're going to the legal. Point, you're asking, you're calling up on their honor. You're using the media in a way to say, hey, we don't want to do this. We don't want to have that that footprint of, of legal. We will go there, but let's put something in place where we can come and have a meeting of the minds and get this together. And I really respect your path. Absolutely. And, and we have an email trail where we were, it was indicated that my client was going to receive his capital back. That transfer was put on hold for some reason. We can't, all communication is shut down. Um, so again, the frustration level is high. Sure. Um, and, and right now, uh, again, I think there's some, some interest in the business community. And as, as this story grows, I think you're going to see more investors come out and say, you know, that happened to me and maybe have a little bit more, um, cover or, uh, uh, you know, fortitude to, 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 tell the story of what happened to them as well. So I think a couple of things are going to happen here, guys. If you've if you've ever in, thought of investing in this bank or any of the the uh, conglomerate partners that um, Andrew mentioned, um, take heed on this. We're going to look into this. Andrew, I would really love for you to drop into our personal chat here uh, your email your or, or phone number. I think we can do something together. I'm doing documentaries with many different people. Um, including George, George Floyd's family. And um, so I think that maybe we can explore a documentary um, to get some awareness. I think nowadays, you know, that's my background. I don't know if you know that, but I have two Emmys for my work as a TV producer. And now um, shedding light on any topic, if you look at, you know, Epstein and R. Kelly and, you know, all the other ones, once you shed a little light in dark corners, people start to, to uh, step up and do the right thing. Absolutely. And I have read your bio, your impressive bio. And, and uh, you know, we, we some of the reporters that have picked this story up have called uh, uh, some of the underlyings and the guarantors and, and have not been able to get them for comment. Uh, so, again, that just adds to the frustration level. But uh, it's a cautionary tale and uh, investing is investing. But uh, all, all we want is a level playing field with honest marketing and uh, do what you say you're going to do, basically. Get in touch with me before you go. Um, drop your number here or email and let's let's chat after the show. I have an idea for you and I think uh, we're going to continue this. Thank you for sharing your story. Great, Monique. You have a good night. Thank you. You too, Andrew. Thank you. All right, guys. Next up, we have Ray. Ray, are you standing by? I am. Hey, Ray. Okay, so good. We got hogwash and rhinestones in the house. Ray, go ahead and yes. So We're going to lighten up the mood a little and switch over to some entrepreneurial goodies in the apparel business. Tell us who you are. 
Uh, I'm Ray Finn, and I'm from Holliston, Massachusetts. Um, and I am the owner and designer at Hogwash and Rhinestones. And so great. Oh, yep. So great no, to see you. <laughs> Go ahead, Ray. No, go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. Uh, it's great to see you and thank you so much for being here. So guys, I want you guys to really just dive into this and have fun. Ray, give us your backstory because I think that what you're doing with clothes and, and with um, hogwash and rhinestones is really unique and fun. So give us your, your, your discovery story on the brand. Well, it actually started as a just a t-shirt company and being out, out on the East Coast and not even near Nashville, but I started a t-shirt company that was like a western graphics um company yeah. and and then in addition to that i started kind of gussying up my own clothes like adding rhinestones and adding studs and just playing around with paint and what and so it started to catch on and then people would be like hey where'd you get that you know i want something like that so it just kind of it kind of tumbled into even more um than t-shirts, you know, it came, like the jeans and jean jackets. And I, it just was something about doing unique pieces that yeah. really spoke to me, you know, because we're all so unique. And yeah. it's like, you know, in the department stores, you go in and it's like eight colors of the same thing. So it's like, I like the fact that you can stand out and be different. And I really love that you leaned into your creativity and you weren't at the top of it, defining, okay, it's got to fit in this box. It's got to be like this. It's gotta be, you just let yourself kind of go with the creative flow. And that's why your brand should be here in Laguna. I mean, you know, if yeah. there's art here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a big fan of coloring outside the lines. You know, I'm, I'm, I've never been, you know, I don't want to be in a box. I don't want to be that way. So, and I feel like a lot of shy people, like if they can't, um, express themselves like through their voice, you know, maybe use their voice, it, they can shine with their clothing. You know, your fashion could tell a whole story about you and you don't even have to say a word. So yes. it's kind of like it's for the shy people, even even though it stands out, but it's it's just, it speaks volumes. And that's what, that's what I love is like giving like a simple discarded piece that somebody didn't want or, or a pair of jeans and giving it volume, you know, yes. that, tell a story. So. Beautifully, beautifully put. And I think, you know, in the pandemic, I discovered that I'm actually an introverted extrovert, which now looking back, that makes sense. I mean, although I wanted to be around people, I was just fine being by myself. And, you know, you said something about shy people that could be translated through, you know, art. And, and so you've got something behind you. I see that you've got your rack. Is oh, there yeah. I have some stuff back here. Yeah. Can you, um, can you grab some pieces and maybe share with us? What you got going on over there? Let me see. I'm like the worst when it comes to. <laughs> no, we're, so this, this is the startup jacket that I oh, have yeah. here. Um, That's really nice. Yeah, this is um, and then on the front. So it's really about you being unique, you know. Yes. Um, let me just see. What's the story behind that that jacket with the black? Um, is it a Catholic cross or like an Irish? It's just a rock and roll, like rock and roll, rock and roll. Uh, right? Nice. Yeah. So and it's it's just not it's you don't have to say a word. You know you what really I mean? Don't. Like if you wear something like that, you don't have to say much. Besides, like, oh yeah, you're a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> so, so okay, so if you are in the uh, music business, everybody, I know some people are listening. They're obviously in the TV business. That's my background, and of course, film. Um, come and reach out to hogwash and rhinestones for your custom pieces it looks like no two items are the same right because you're renewing and recycling absolutely absolutely yep and that's another piece you know that's just a whole nother part of it is like the discarded you know landfills and things like that with the clothing that you stick in those bins you never know where that where it goes yeah. so it's like it's just nice to give a second the second time around you know it's like a second chance and yeah. just you know to put it put it into these into the clothing it's just they're made with a lot of love and just with a lot of purpose you know to be to be green and slow fashion is in so. slow fashion is in i love that so where do you see uh hogwash and rhinestones in the next like year or two where where are you looking to be what spaces are you looking to occupy um definitely nashville and um 
Austin, you know, uh, Texas, you know, Nashville, Texas area, and of course, LA. <laughs> Come on, we got rocksters out here too. We need some. St- we need some rhinestones and hogwash. <laughs> I watch it. Too. Yeah, I want to spread it. Like it's taking a long time. This is my twelfth year, and uh, finally, wow. you know, I've got some wheels moving, and uh, it feels really good. But yeah, definitely want to expand, and um, you know, just have be in that place where I go somewhere or see a picture in a magazine or I see something that I'm like, Oh, they're wearing hogwash. That's what I, <laughs> I, I don't know why I got this flash. I'm like, I could see you in like the hard rock in Vegas for sure. Someone in there could wear, could wear that, you know, oh, or yeah. well, the hard rock's gone. I take that back. I guess it's a new hotel now, but Vegas, I could see it. Yeah. I would love like, see that, the that kind of, opportunity just to have it like like even being um commissioned by like the hard rock or a music venue and do like uh just a series of custom stuff for them like that's i would love that i would love that you should make a list you probably already know this guys on the startup you know i come up with ideas when we have people on that's why we're the startup and we put good karma out there for ideas but i think ray what if you made a list of some of the casino shows Planet Hollywood, um, Caesars, and see who's on their roster and maybe send them some samples. Maybe send them a scarf or a hat, something that doesn't kill your budget, maybe a jacket. I mean, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, go I for that. Definitely. Thank you. That's You're welcome. A great idea. That's a great idea. Thank you. I think that, you know, guys, as, as entrepreneurs, we want to just identify where we're going and just go for it. You know, if you have a few, you know, extra bucks to, to, to give people a little taste of what you're doing. And so, Right. For the people who are looking to get into the apparel business, those shyer people, those, you know, quieter creatives, um, where give us a little bit about your background besides how you discovered the company, but maybe just the steps in how you got here. Right. Like putting the business into place. If someone were looking to get into the apparel business, what are the first three things that you would suggest they do to cover themselves and their property and their ideas? Yeah, it's, uh, well, the idea is that you definitely copyright. Like, if you have a brand and a logo, you know, that's where you should start. Is like copywriting, um, any kind of taglines that you have that you want to protect. Um, yeah. That's the place to start. I mean, and, and sketching and then just reaching out to the right people. Find a mentor. Really right. just kind of finding a mentor and just like it, clothing, you know, clothing is not an easy business to make it in like I, you know, manufacturing and things like that. But if you can make yourself, your brand stand out, like I think that too is identifying like a niche or somewhere that you can be helpful at the same time as a designer, you know, like, are you fixing a problem? You know, it's like, all right, there's a lot of waste. So I started upcycling. So Mm. that was like kind of like fixing a problem. But I think that finding a mentor and just doing your research, um, and what is there a lack of, you know, it's again, it's like, it's like any entrepreneur, like any type of startup business. Like, are you yeah. solving a problem? Are you adding a service that there isn't, there's a, where there's a problem. Adding that, value. That, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I love that you touched on the copyright piece. We always say here to make sure you get your trademark and your copyright and all that lined up before you buy a website. You know, you want to put the first steps in place. And, you know, I had another idea for you, Ray. You got me inspired, girlfriend, that jacket. I don't know. I like your, I like your beads on your um, on your collar. Your oh, beads you. collar. Yes. Yes, yes that's yes. hot. And I'm all into hardware. I love hardware. I'd wear that. I would totally hardware wear it. and rhinestones. Yep. Yes. Long wash, baby. So, um, you know, I think because I got invited to a movie this weekend, next weekend for Barbie. And, um, you know, they're going all out with the Barbie. I got my pink wig. I got my outfit. I'm trying to get all. But I'm thinking for your brand, wouldn't it be cool to get, a you know, a list of the say, even if you just picked one um one season right so summer right let's say you got your list of blockbusters that are going to be to be released maybe you did some you know re-upping on those films so like if you found those shirts like you did barbie and you blinged out barbie you know you did it seasonally by the movies okay you know what's so funny today i i had um a group of ladies come into the studio the studio today and i actually have three Barbie jackets that I have to have for the premiere there. I'm they 
commissioned me to make them three Barbie jackets and a pair of Barbie uh, bell bottoms to have for it. the, the um, premiere on Saturday. <laughs> there you go. Great minds think alike. She's yeah, on it, you guys. I love that. So are you available for people if they have an anniversary coming up or a themed event absolutely. to be commissioned? Yep, absolutely. Where can they find you, Ray? Okay, so you can uh, my website, www.hogwashandrhinestones.com. Um, we're on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I tend to get a lot of uh, messages through there yeah. more than the website. Um, and Or just give me a call. Wonderful. Well, I'm excited and we're working on with your people, we're working on getting some stuff here in the Southern California, LA Laguna area. So we're going to, we're going to make that I happen. think I need to make you something. I think I, I would to... love that. Yeah, oh. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> well, right now I'm in the red theme. Um, I got a little red sports car, so I'm in red. All and right. red. Yes. I like red. the roaring twenties. So if that gives you any, uh, vibe right. about me, <laughs> a little awesome. page or, Dorothy Dandridge or whatever. All right, you guys. Ray, thank you for the um, the creative inspiration today. I feel your vibe from the screen and much continued success. I'm excited to see what you do next. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's a I pleasure. Connect again for sure. All right, my dear. Have a good weekend. All right, you too. Thank you. All right, guys. That was Ray from Hogwash and Rhinestones. If you have, um, oh look at my hair, guys. Ooh, what do we do? We gotta gotta do it this way. <laughs> Um, if you've got an event or you are looking for some custom pieces, check them out, okay? Um, we have one more guest here in a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and plug my new project, guys. I, As you probably have seen on social media, I have been uh, working on a casting uh, journey this week. Uh, we are looking for single men, okay, six feet and above, uh, 30 years old to 40. Um you know, preferably never married, no kids. So maybe he's a successful person in travel and business and in health and hobbies, but perhaps he hasn't been so successful in love. And that's a lot of people's story. A lot of entrepreneurs, you know, here at the startup, we deal with that. So this is what it's called. It's called lovesearchtv.com. Okay. Um, what you need to know is that this show is going to be on one of the four major networks um, so the, what are the four major networks? You guys know what they are. Um, so it'll be on one of those networks. It'll be kind of, uh, similar to a lot of the dating shows you've seen out there. Um, but it's going to have a twist. And so if you know anyone that's single, that is six foot tall and above 30 to 40 looking for love or open to exploring, um, on a dating show, you know, the network is looking for them like yesterday. So guys go to lovesearchtv.com submit your application i'm gonna have a qr code on my socials later lovesearchtv.com we're now casting single men all over the us okay top to bottom so you could be in new york you could be in la you could be in alaska you could be in puerto rico you could be in miami florida you could be anywhere we would love to meet you um go submit your application and make sure you write on your application you can select who sent you um, go ahead and select Alicia, which is one of my coworkers. Um, if you don't see my name, Monique, just select that you found us through Alicia, okay? So again, go to lovesearchtv.com. If you are single, 30 to 40, six feet tall and above, you're the dream boat. You've got it going on business-wise. You've already figured it out business-wise. You're successful. You've traveled, but maybe you are needing some assistance in love. We can help you with that. All right, guys, um, I want to give you an update on the Pandemic Project documentary. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and, you know, do something unique uh, for the first of the three. You guys, you know, that's a docu-trilogy. So as the first film, I'll have an announcement really soon, probably in the next uh, couple weeks, um, if not earlier. So stick around for that. And um, yeah, thank you so much for for sticking out the journey with that film. I mean, it's been, it's been quite the journey. I know Sam, you stuck it out with me, right? Sam, remember when I was on the tarmac and I was leaving Turkey and I was supposed to be on the air. <laughs> I never miss my shows, <laughs> but that, yeah, right. It was like one hour difference from where I was going to where I was uh, coming from. And I missed the mark that day, but Sam, 
granted me some grace. Guys, also let me plug the station. We're growing. We're live. We're streaming live. Sam is kicking some ass. We are streaming live on Twitter now, on YouTube. Of course, we're on Facebook. And now we're on LinkedIn, which is great for my show because that's where a lot of the business people are. And uh, thank you so much, Sam, for constantly looking for ways to grow the brand and having me here. I also want to remind you guys in a little less than two months time, we're going to be celebrating my fourth year. Oh, my God. Four, four years on the startup. I cannot believe it that four years ago we started this little show and we're starting to grow it and get more diverse guests and just casting a wider net for you guys. So hopefully you're growing with us and hopefully your brand is growing. And if you're just starting out, we love, go look in the archives. Um, you can look, you can find us on YouTube under Latchkey Kid Films. Um, that's my distribution hub. And um, Cap Aquarius Media is the media company, my media company that produces this. And of course, our distribution channel is LA Talk Radio, our distribution arm, excuse me. And um, yeah, but guys, also follow LA Talk Radio on all your socials, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, just get into it. And you can follow me, my personal page, at Monique Loray Stinson. That's at Monique Loray. And then just add Stinson, S-T-I-N-S-O-N, like the beach. Um, you can follow us at the startup with Monique Loray on Instagram. And you can also follow me on Twitter. And I'm on, well, we just heard about threads. So I need to get a page on threads. Sam, are we, are we moving to threads? Have you heard of threads? Let's see what Sam says. He types to me during the show, guys. Uh, yeah, so everybody's on threads now. How do you guys like it? Yeah, he probably will. He probably will thread to threads. Um, all right, very good. So there's just so much going on, guys. There's so much going on. Got a lot of good stuff. Um, we Let's see what else we have. Oh, we have the... Emmys coming up in the fall in September. If you guys are a brand, a uh, startup, you're looking to place in the swag bags, you want to be a part of that, you can email us um, capaquariusmedia at gmail.com or you can email me at the startup with Monique Loray at gmail.com. That's a long email. Uh, but yeah, we would love to have you. It, you'll get some celebrity and influencer uh, photos and tags and visibility for your brand. So if that's something that you are looking to to garner. We can help you with that. I think we have another guest, Sam, coming. I'm really kind of excited about it because I've been sampling the goods. Um, I'm not a sweets person at all, but I'm telling you, these, these cookies by Carolyn Haler, mighty licious. Oh, my goodness. So if you are looking for something gluten-free, I have a friend gin that's gluten-free if you're looking for something i guess they would just say it's pretty much kosher so it's gluten-free and handmade um there's something else pretty fabulous about it i believe it's also vegan let's see allergen free oh my goodness gluten-free all right oh speaking of which here we go let's bring carolyn in <laughs> Carolyn, how's it going? I was dipping my hand in the cookie jar. <laughs> good, how are you doing? Good, good to see you. Thank you for, for logging in. And I was just kind of giving them a preview for our last but not least, My Delicious founder. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us who you are? Sure. My name is Carolyn Haler. I am the founder and CEO of Mighty Licious Inc. We make gluten-free and some vegan and better for you cookies. Wonderful. And I've got, I was just telling the, I was prepping the audience, Carol, Carolyn, that I'm a salty person. I like salt, but these cookies are delicious. And as you can see, I've, I've broken into the bag. Tell us about your founding story. Tell us a little bit more about your, your brand. Sure. I was diagnosed with celiac disease in 2012. Prior to that, I was in my early 30s at that point, and prior to that, had been eating everything. Had studied abroad in Italy, had lived in Switzerland, eaten all of the bread and the croissants and the pasta, and lived a full gluten lifestyle. And was diagnosed in 2012. My health had deteriorated very rapidly within 12 months, and started living gluten free. Um, in 2012, there really wasn't too much competition on the market. My life was basically resigned to a few, like the 
the end cap in a grocery store, if you will. There was Char, there was Glutino, those um, Udi's had just been launched at that point or Udi's was gaining traction. So there was about three brands you could choose from, but not too much product innovation. Um, flash forward to 2017, I was working in finance and there was a lot more products on the market, but not many that, it didn't feel as if the products were new and different. They just felt like there's new products with new brand names and new packaging. But then once you open the packaging, it was the same old thing. I understand now having been manufacturing for over five years, why that is and why it is so hard to get innovation in the industry. Um, but at that point, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to make a gluten-free cookie that tastes good. Um, and that was my mission. I didn't want to make something like there's a lot of better for you products out there that are free from everything. I wanted something that tasted delicious that I actually wanted to eat. And like, if I'm going to eat a cookie, I want it to be a cookie. Right. I you don't want it to be a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> you would enjoy I'll that. <laughs> I'll eat a salad and I'll have some broccoli. That's health food. Cookies are not health food and they shouldn't be a part of that category. You can right. make a cookie better for you. You can feel good about what the cookie is made from, but a cookie is essentially fat, a sugar, and a flour. It doesn't matter. And it's always those things, even if the sugar is, you know, coconut palm sugar or apple, apple, applesauce, it's still sugar. Yeah. Um, and so I, I just went on a mission to create a good gluten free cookie. And the cookie you're actually holding is brown butter chocolate chip. That's the first cookie I ever created. It is my personal favorite. And you hit on it. I am a salty person. When I have a sweet treat, I want something that's balanced. I want something that's sweet, but salty, a little bit savory. So you get, you know, you want to eat more of it. Often also gluten-free products, because they're lacking, they have to lack a lot of things. They're also lacking in complexity. They're often just very sweet and very bland. And I wanted to create a flavor profile with my cookies that were a little more sophisticated. Um, the product still is palatable for young people, yep. but it's not, it's also palatable for parents and adults. And there's a very sophisticated, nuanced um, range of cookies and flavors um, that anyone of any age can enjoy. You've done really well with it because guys it, it's like more it's still moist it's gooey and moist and she shipped this from the east coast guys yeah i'm in california and yeah those cookies I bought it two weeks ago it was still absolutely. delicious i mean huh? i'm very involved with my manufacturing process i am always there i am quality control and um i know when those were baked it was you know I th maybe not january they're probably baked in may so they're at least three months old. We have worked really hard to do a soft baked cookie. So it's as fresh baked as we can possibly get to you being a shelf stable product, which is no mm -hmm. small feat because the um, supply chain is nine months. So you have to create a product that is gluten free, preservative free, all natural, in some cases vegan, and have it be on the product on the shelf for nine months, which explains why there's a lot of lacking in um, a lot of better for you products is because when they were baked, they probably tasted great. Yeah. It was nine to 12 months ago. Um, so we've, we've worked really hard at creating a product that is shelf stable, that will stay soft baked, that will maintain the flavor and the experience that you really want from a cookie. Um, it was really important to me that I create a product that is not gritty or grainy and doesn't have any aftertaste that just is a neutral flavor. We yeah. were, and that secret is in our rice flour. What most people don't know is that rice flour, even at the commercial scale, because I buy truckloads of it, is made for bake, for cooking, I'm sorry. So it's made for thickening sauces. It's made for putting, making crust for chicken nuggets, things like that. It's not made for baking. Baking is a chemistry and it's very sensitive. And what that means is when you buy rice flour at the store, at the retail store, even when I buy it commercially, it's, it's milled to a particle size that is rather large for baking. When you feel like if you put your fingers in wheat flour, it feels soft and silky and delicate. When you put your fingers in rice flour that you buy at the grocery store, you, it feels like sand, fine sand, really fine sand, but it's still, you could feel each grain it's granular. And that is not fine enough for baking because a cookie only bakes for eight to 12 minutes. It has to absorb all the moisture in a very short amount of time. It's not a cake. 
which will bake for 45 minutes. So the particles of the flour have to be small enough that they can actually absorb the moisture in the cookie in eight minutes or less. And so we work directly with our mills to make sure that our flour is ground to a particle size that is appropriate for baking. And that is what really is a difference in my cookies. I mean, there's a lot of other things we do with great ingredients and our methods and our processes are all very different um, and things that we created and innovated with for our cookies. But it's really the care and the lengths I've gone to to secure rice flour and that will work for baking. And you can feel it. You can taste it. When you bite it in the cookie, it just feels like a cookie. It doesn't feel grainy or gritty. It doesn't feel chalky. Often the products will um, be chalky. What having the appropriate rice flour has done allows us to not use ingredients like amaranth flour, garbanzo bean flour, sorghum flour. These are three flours. You off, sometimes you'll find all three of these flours in gluten-free baked goods, and they are used because they have a higher pr uh, protein content, which means they're closer to wheat in the way that they bake. However, they taste bad. <laughs> <laughs> They have a weird aftertaste. They have a chalky texture often. I don't know if you've ever experienced that chalky texture when you're eating a gluten-free product. Yeah, um, yeah. They have, or they just feel weird. And by not using those flours in my cookies, there is no weird gritty flavor taste from the rice flour. So no. we have the nice rice flour. We also don't have any chalky texture and we don't have any weird aftertaste. Wow. It's true, guys, because I've been, she sent me a couple of them, and I got to be honest, I ate the sugar cookie one first. I tore that thing up yeah, so yeah. fast, <laughs> Carolyn. And you know what? How long did it take when you were diagnosed to actually getting your first batch for sampling, would you say? Well, I was diagnosed in 2012. I didn't get fed up with the gluten-free market till 2017. So it was five years before I was like, you know what? There was literally a moment I was uh, shopping all day and I hadn't eaten and I was standing in line and there was like 40 people in front of me. It was during the holidays and I'm starving. So I grab a bag of gluten-free cookies off the shelf and I'm, I open it and I eat it there. And the cookie was so gross that I literally put it back in the bag. And I was like, hmm, do you think I could just like put this back on the shelf? Because <laughs> these cookies are like $10. I did and I bought them and I threw them out before I even left the store. And that was the moment that I was like, you know what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something has to be done here. This has to be better. Um, so I, that was in November when I sort of had that moment. And I was still mm -hmm. working full time in finance. So I sort of started sort of thinking about recipes. Um, that 2017. Was, that was that was November of 2016. I fully incorporate. I created and incorporated in April of 2017. Okay. Um, and then I was accepted into Whole Foods by July. So, guys, listen. This is the the epitome of. I see a niche. I see a need in the market especially if you're passionate about it, it's something you're putting in your mouth. But this is, Carolyn, you're the epitome of like high standard meats. I'm gonna fill the market with something that I would feed my family, myself. Yeah. Now she made it. These are all her places, ladies and gentlemen, Whole Foods within a year, Costco, Amazon, Giant, Ralph's. I mean, Fairway, Walmart. Pushing, Walmart. I yeah. mean, the list goes on and on. Kings, Gristel's. Uh, I mean, congratulations, because I see and taste and feel, and now speaking to you, I can see the quality. And by the way, everybody, in case you're calorie counting, only 180 calories for every uh, two cookies. And the so two there you go. are a normal size cookie. So yeah. it's, it's, a, it's the same size as the cookie on the front of the package. It's a size of a cookie. Like if you were to bake at home, this is the size cookie that would come out of your oven. Um, a lot of my competitors, the cookies about the size, smaller than a quarter. Okay. <laughs> which is, and you get like nine of them in a package. <laughs> yeah. Nine quarter size cookies in a package. And they're like, only nine grams of sugar or five grams of sugar. I'm like, yeah, but there's only, it's only an eight grams of cookie. So like. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, grab them today. Carolyn, you can see her at mydelicious.com. Vegan, female owned, LGBTQ friendly, clean, 
non-GMO, kosher. She checks all the boxes if you're looking to, to secure a beautiful cookie that respects your health needs. Thank you for being with us, Carolyn. I'm excited to see where you go next. Thank you so much for having me. This has been amazing. My pleasure. All right, guys. What will you start up today? I will see you next weekend. Ciao. You're listening to The Startup with Monique LeRae, only on LA Talk Radio.